a new place. I'm in a new space. Welcome to my new office slash film setup. I'm no longer sitting on my piano. I actually have like a comfortable real thing to sit on. How cool is that? I'm filming this on a very dark and rainy, cozy day. So cuddle up in a blanket with a warm cup of tea and get cozy with me because this is just going to be a little bit of a chatty life update. So if you're not into that kind of thing, you don't have to watch this. Just click away. Love to have you here, but if you don't want to be here, then please don't be here. Go do something that brings you joy. Obviously, I'm in a new place. I have moved. It's been an adventure. It's been a long time since I've sat down in front of camera and talked at a lens alone in a room with you. What was I going to talk about? Darling. It has been a long time coming. This has been something that my partner and I have been trying to do and we've been planning for it for more than a year. It was a chaotic few months as I drove over a thousand miles with my cats in a car, lived in a couple different Airbnbs. Ooh, okay. We lived in a couple of different Airbnbs while we were looking for a home and we, we found one. So yeah, it's been a lot. I want to add a little bit of structure to this. So I'm gonna talk about the move a little bit. I'm gonna talk about how that has affected my craft since that's, I know, one of the more popular topics on my channel of the videos that I have posted in the last few months. And then I'm gonna talk about all of the art projects that I've been working on lately because there's been a whole bunch of stuff going on and there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up. So I will get to that at uh, at the end. So my craft was a lot more just kind of focused on getting back into things and reading books and reading about different practices when I was at my previous place because a very important part of my craft to me is my connection with nature and I was living in a place where I felt like I it was just difficult for me to foster that connection in the way that I wanted to and so I'm so lucky and so grateful now that I've come to this house in this place where I have a yard I can grow herbs, I can have a massive garden and grow fruits and vegetables and all sorts of amazing things. I'm ridiculously lucky and because my craft is so focused on nature and my connection with nature and so moving to a different region as I have, like I said, I drove over a thousand miles from the previous place that I lived, basically just went straight north. The environment here is very, very different so that is going to have a big impact on my craft. Now, this area is it's still pretty far away from where I grew up, but because I'm now a little bit more, I'm outside of a city and I'm in a space where I'm really well surrounded by nature and a lot of trees. And in a lot of ways, it is more similar to how I grew up. So it is much more of a comfortable space for me to settle into my craft and to foster my connections with nature and be able to grow my craft within that connection. With that said, I have been putting so much of my energy, like I said, into the art projects that I've had going on, as well as just finding this house and moving and getting settled in and unpacking. I haven't really had any time to just sit down and spend practicing. Well, practicing most of the witchcraft practices that I'm interested in just because time and energy has been so 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 lacking and also being in a new space in a new environment it is taking me time to learn what kind of indigenous plants exist in this area, what kinds of things thrive, and what kinds of things I feel called to use in my craft. So there's a big aspect of just getting settled in and learning the nature that is around me, learning about all the plants and the different animals, and growing just this new connection with this new place that I found myself in. So I definitely am excited to start creating videos about what's been going on and what kinds of things I've been doing to grow my craft, but I think I just need to take a little bit of time to just settle in and find my, my new center in this new place. So one of the things that is going to be helpful with that my partner and I have both been putting a ton of energy into is getting our garden set up because we moved into this house like right in the middle of planting season with you know just all of our boxes packed so it's just been a scramble to start seedlings and to get the garden set up and we found out we couldn't garden in the ground so we had to make raised beds for everything and it's been a lot it's been chaos we also have a lot of deer come through our yard my cats saw a deer for the first time right before i sat down to film this and they growled at it the deer just stood outside and the cats just stared at the deer and the deer stared at the cats and they just stared at each other and they didn't know what to do. This move has been really interesting for my cats because they were found as a litter in the streets in the city that I used to live in. We adopted them when they were six months old and now we've moved out to a place where they're just surrounded by all sorts of wildlife that they've never seen in their lives. So it's been really, really wonderful for them to be able to have that as part of their life as well. Yeah, putting the garden together has been chaotic. You know, we, we didn't 
didn't want to let this whole year go to waste just because we happened to move in, you know, a little bit late in the planning season. We really wanted to be able to take advantage of it since we're here and we have all this space. So yeah, despite kind of being in a rush and kind of having to throw everything together as fast as possible, it's been really valuable. We've been learning a lot and we have a pretty decent garden going now. I definitely want to find a way to be able to share what's going on with the garden and share what I'm learning and kind of show what's going on there. So on the art side of things, this is something that has already been announced on Twitter, but I haven't really shared it anywhere on this platform. I was hired on as an artist for the NFT project Go Milky, which is a collectibles project that is raising money for the nonprofit March of Dimes. If you're not familiar with March of Dimes, they are a super, super amazing nonprofit. I'm gonna just like pull up their website and read something off of it so I don't pull inaccurate information out of my head. Together, we can work to end preventable maternal health risks and death, end preventable preterm birth and infant death, and end the health equity gap for all families. That kind of gives you an idea. They're working to make healthcare for, for moms and their babies equally accessible for all types of families. It's a really, really lovely, really wonderful organization that is doing such, such important work. So I'm super happy and super excited to be involved in such a cool project. I know NFTs are something that are a little bit controversial for a number of different reasons, but it's nice to see projects like this that are doing what they can to try to use this brand new growing platform to impart a positive change on something. So in terms of designing the art, the artwork itself that I'm creating for the project, if you're not familiar with NFT's collectibles project, usually they're sets of some thousands of different images that are comprised of a whole bunch of different assets that are randomly generated and put together. So on my side of it, I have been drawing hundreds of different assets and exporting them and formatting them in a way that I can put them into the generator and see how things look. It's been a lot of work, but it's really, really cool. And I can't wait for for the collection to go live so that everyone can see it. One of the things that I talked about with the project founder when we we're first talking about bringing me on as the artist is he was talking about how in our culture breastfeeding is something you have to do behind closed doors like seeing breasts outside of a sexualized context is just not something that we have normalized in our culture but which is absolutely ridiculous because that's a huge part of the biological purpose of what breasts are for <laughs> and it's a natural thing that happens with almost everybody so it really doesn't make any sense in the same way that things like periods are kind of like a taboo to talk about it's just wh why are so many natural bodily processes just like not accepted by our society it makes no sense but anyway so this was a big topic that i talked about with the project founder so we centered the art around the idea that breastfeeding should be more normalized in our culture so a big part of the collection is babies babies and their mothers babies breastfeeding from their mothers we also wanted to represent that not all mothers are able to breastfeed their babies so we also have part of the collection that our babies drinking from bottles as well so that there's representation on both sides there and then a lot of the elements that I was drawing were different outfits and different accessories for the babies and for the moms. So for designing the mom's outfits, I really wanted to have a focus on representing different types of moms, especially moms that are working different types of careers and different career paths. I tried to design the outfits with that in mind. It's also an NFT project, so you also want to have things to be kind of fun and colorful. Like I said, the collection has not been released yet, but if you join the project's Discord server or the Twitter, which I will have linked in the video description, you can see the previews that we've released so far and see what the artwork looks like. Oh, and another aspect of kind of normalizing breastfeeding in our culture that we wanted to portray through the art was showing breastfeeding being done in different places. So in terms of designing the backgrounds for each of the pieces, just to show that like breastfeeding is a thing that can happen anywhere that a mother and her child goes. Super, super excited for this collection to be released so that you can see it and see all of the cool things that we've been putting together. So links will be in the description if you're interested in checking that out. So as far as art things that are coming up, <laughs> because I've been putting so much of my time and energy into creating the artwork for this project, into moving mostly, moving and getting settled in, getting the garden set up, and then continuing to edit and put out the videos for the pre-filmed footage that I had, I haven't had a lot of energy for my own projects and my own ideas um, or a lot of time. So little time. 24 hours in a day, it's not enough. So I have such a big backlog of ideas and projects that I want to work on as well. 
Of the things that are coming up, what I'm hoping is going to happen is first I'll be able to complete the zine that I have been working on. Um, so far it's going to be kind of an educational thing, so right now I've just been working on putting together all of my sources and different resources for the information I want to have in that. So I'm hoping that I can spend a few weeks putting that together and then make it available online. Over the last few months I have finally felt like my art has come to a place to where I can start telling the stories I want to be able to tell through it. Since I took a long break from art, I, you know, I spent a really long time just trying to get back into it and trying to feel comfortable drawing again. So I was just, you know, drawing a lot of stuff from Pinterest and basically trying to sort of channel from other people's creative ideas in order to turn on my creative muscles again. Kind of a muscle that was in my head that I hadn't exercised for years and it had just become this tiny little thing and I felt like I didn't know how to turn on that creative flow anymore. So I feel like I finally got into a place where I can and I can start telling my own stories and my own ideas, and I have about seven comic book ideas floating around in my head now. I finally wrote down everything that I have so far, and I've kind of put it on a schedule so that I can start prioritizing things. Oh god, I'm covered in cat hair now. I basically have a few fun ideas that I want to do first, just because I don't have a lot of experience drawing comics. It's something that I've always wanted to do. I've wanted to make comics for a really, really long time, and I have so many stories that I want to tell, but it's not something I really have experience in yet, so I kind of have a couple of ideas that the stories are a little bit simpler, the world building is a little bit less complex, so it'll be a little bit easier for me to execute on those first and kind of use those as practice for my epic fantasy <laughs> that I will tell one day. I have a lot of work to do to figure out where exactly I want to release my comics once I've made them. I would love to be able to set up my own website and publish them there, but since I'm just starting out, I also want to be able to share them somewhere where I'd be able to reach an audience. You know, like webtoons or something like that. I feel like there's so many different options now for putting out comics now that I just need to do a little bit of research because I'm not really sure where to begin. If you have any recommendations or if you have a favorite comic platform, please, please let me know what it is, what your experience with it is. If you are following my TikTok, you probably have seen posts that I was doing um, showing off some of my OCs from some of my different stories. And a lot of them are not in the stories that I'm planning on sharing immediately. A lot of them are a little bit farther out. I put all of the ideas that I want to do on a big 18 month schedule. If I'm trying to work on 20 different things at once, nothing is ever gonna get done. So I'm trying to focus. That's why I'm putting the zine first. And that's why I'm going to try to start shifting to focus on just one comic at a time instead of seven because even one comic is going to be a ton to work on. Now that I have that sort of rough long-term schedule, I can start carving out time on a week by week and a day by day basis to start working on those ideas and start executing on them so that I will actually be able to complete them and get them done. So yeah, gonna give things a go. I'm sure not everything is gonna go as planned and things are gonna change. You can come along that journey with me and we'll see how it goes if you want. Maybe I'll get none of these things done, but I really hope I get at least some of them done because that would be really lovely. As always, if you made it all the way to the end, that means so much to me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section what your favorite comic book platform is, if you have any, or if you prefer comics that are published on artists' own websites and let me know what your favorite genre of comic is. Thanks so much for watching guys, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye.